Hello everyone, hope you're having a fantastic day. Let's see if it gets any better after all this Ryzen 5 information I'm about to share. It's so refreshing to finally have non-Intel CPU options on the market and AMD is really pushing hard towards uh, providing a diverse price range for these CPUs and uh, with the release of these new SKUs. This is Ryzen 5 explained. So Ryzen 5 fits in the middle between the not yet released Ryzen 3 that's gonna come out in the second half of 2017 and the pretty exciting multi-workload focused Ryzen 7 uh, with entry price below 300 as this is the preferred spot for the mainstream consumer. Just like with Ryzen 7, Ryzen 5 is equipped with AMD Sense MI, making it a smart core for boosting clocks when you need it with precision boost and XFR, then down clocking it when you don't need the power and all Ryzen 5 CPUs have the multiplier unlocked so everyone can play the silicon overclocking lottery. Although let's not get ahead of ourselves, overclocking on the Ryzen 7 CPU so far has been a bit of a challenge, although we did get the 1800X to stable 4.1 GHz and nice overclock on the memory to 3200 MHz, but with a toasty ha -ha, 77 degrees Celsius on the core, so that's quite alarming, but we'll see where the Ryzen 5 takes us and we were not able to take the 1700X beyond four gigahertz. So back to Ryzen 5, there'll be two tiers of Ryzen 5 CPUs, uh, six core 12 thread SKUs and four core eight thread models, uh, all thanks to scalable Zen core design. Starting with the entry level four core eight thread CPU, we have the Ryzen 5 1400 with 3.2 to 3.4 gigahertz. And then the flagship four core part is the 1500X with about a 10% faster base clock and 9% faster boost clocks. Moving up the core ladder are the six core 12 thread models. So the Ryzen 5 1600 with 3.2 to 3.6 gigahertz being the entry level six core chip with the 1600X being the flagship Ryzen 5 CPU with 3.6 to four gigahertz. And so if we take a look at the entire Ryzen 5 stack, the three lower models are 65 watt TDP, same as the Ryzen 7 1700, while the flagship six core model is at 95 watts. AMD has also shared an interesting tidbit of information for the 1500X, in particular with the XFR value of 200 megahertz headroom, so it will boost up to 3.9 gigahertz, while the XFR values for the rest of the SKUs will be still unknown and will be a surprise. The only performance teaser comes with the Cinebench NT benchmark, comparing the flagship 1600X with the i5-7600K, which is a $240 part, quad core, no hyper threading. And the only logical conclusion to why this slide is included is to obviously highlight AMD's competitive advantage in terms of price. So Ryzen 5 processors range between $169 to $249, competing between the i3s and the i5s of this world. And it's a satisfying and pretty competitive price tag while still distancing the flagship 1600X uh, away from the entry level $369 eight core Ryzen 7 1700. April 11th is the global launch date and AMD really wants to push the Ryzen 5 CPUs with the B350 motherboards. So really satisfying and saturating that mainstream market uh, for a good price to performance ratio. However, it's still distancing itself from the X370 platform, which is the enthusiast platform because the B350 motherboards will not support uh, multi-GPU uh, configurations. And there's also some other limitations within the IO, such as uh, less USB and less SATA connections. And with all that said, the unlocked multiplier is probably the most interesting aspect of these Ryzen 5 CPUs, simply because you might have the potential to increase the performance of the lower tier SKUs by overclocking them to match the performance of their higher tier brothers. That's exactly what we saw with the R7 1700 and the 1700X being overclocked to four gigahertz and basically matching the performance of the 1800X while being significantly lower in price, bring them to a much better value versus the 1800X. And let's hope that trend continues with the Ryzen 5 CPUs, with let's say 1400 overclocking that to performance of the 1500X and the, the six core models with the 1600 being overclocked to 1600X uh, performance wise. Let's just hope there's enough overclocking headroom uh, between these Ryzen 5 CPUs. And remember that the Zen core is scalable. So the six core model is an eight core part with two cores disabled. Uh, but how does that impact overclocking behavior? We shall see in our full review. 
And the last point to cover are the new Wraith coolers that come with the Ryzen 5 stack. So you'll get the 65 watt Stealth cooler with the 1400, uh, a slightly larger 95 watt heatsink, the Spire with the 1500X and the uh, R5 1600. And interestingly, no Wraith cooler will be included with the 1600X because apparently AMD wants you to have your own proper cooling solution with your flagship purchase. Also, Ryzen 5 coolers are not lit. You'll have to step up your game to Ryzen 7 to get that RGB circle. And that is all the news surrounding Ryzen 5. What are your expectations and predictions for these new CPUs? Leave them in the comments down below. April 11th is the global launch date, so make sure to stay around for our full reviews. We'll see what uh, CPUs we get first. Uh, but uh, I'm Dimitri with Hardware Canucks. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.